Well, good morning to you all and can we give you a huge welcome to Lakeside Church on this Easter Sunday morning. You know, we are so delighted that you're able to join with us and our prayer is that over these next 50 or so minutes that we've got together that you will both know and experience God's amazing love and be encouraged for this week ahead. We've got a number of our online pastors ready and waiting to connect with you across all the different media channels right now and so please check in and say hi to them. And if it's your first time here with us, please do let us know as we would love to hear from you also. So just before I hand us over to them, why don't you allow me to pray for you? Father, I want to thank you for your presence here with us today. I want to thank you that even now, wherever people are watching, that you are right there with them. And I thank you that even though we're in the midst of this incredibly strange and for so many this worrying and unnerving season that we're in, that your promises still remain the same, that you are for them, you're not against them, and that you want to help them, and you want them to know your amazing love and peace. And so I pray for all of us right now that you will help us to keep our eyes fixed firmly upon you, and I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Darkness flee. I'll raise. 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you, yeah. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, You're worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And holy, there is no one like. You, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
pieces broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I am found was blind but now I see I can see you now I can see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down Raising up the broken to our failure you take our weakness you set your treasure in jars of clay to take this heart Lord I'll be your vessel the world to see your life in me oh, amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. I was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you now. I can see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down Raising up the broken to life Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me oh I once was lost but now I am found I was blind but now I see amazing grace how sweet the sound Saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I have found Was blind but now I see Well, I've got a few notices that I want to share with you just over these next couple of minutes. And, uh, and whilst I'm doing this, I'm going to ask you once again to get your mobile phones at the ready so we can all get ready to send a few people a message letting them know that we're thinking of them. But first of all, as you've been hearing from us many times now, that staying connected is really, really important at this time. And so just another quick reminder that our virtual coffee house is open each morning through the week from 11 through to 11.45. All the details get posted up on our social media pages. So if you don't already follow us, then now is a great time to start doing that. The details are coming up on the screen as I speak. Also, we've relaunched our Tuesday night prayer meetings, which are happening via Zoom each Tuesday evening at eight o'clock, lasting for just one hour. Now you can join for the whole hour if you want to, or maybe just for a part of it, it's entirely up to you. But right now, more than ever, it's so important that we are a praying people. 
Again, the details are being posted up each week on our Facebook and our Instagram pages. Now, as you heard at the start, if it's your first time with us today, we would love to hear from you. All you have to do is go onto our website, www.lakesidechurch.uk, and at the bottom of that page, click on where it says, contact us, tick the appropriate box on that form that you'll have, and then send that over to us. It really is that simple, but we would love to hear from you and then get back in touch with you. Say hi, and as a little thank you, we'd love to look at how we can get one of our Lakeside pens over to you. And then the last thing before we take 60 seconds to mingle with one another, and that is again just to thank you for your ongoing generosity and faithfulness in your giving. I've said it before that even though we're in lockdown as a church, we're not in shutdown and we're still continuing to reach out to others and where we can share God's love with them. So your ongoing support to help us do this is absolutely crucial. And there's two ways that you can do it that are both simple and secure. First of all, you can text your giving or alternatively on your smartphone or device, you can give through Gift. That's an app that you can download from the App Store. The details for both of these are on the screen for you right now. And if you've got any questions surrounding these, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us and we'll try and answer them for you. Okay, have you got your phones at the ready? Because it's time to mingle and let some other people know that even though they might be out of sight right now, they are certainly not out of mind. And if you don't know how this works, here's what we're asking you to do. We want you to choose a few people from your contacts whose names begin with the letters P, R or T. Send them a high five emoji or a thumbs up or because it's Easter and if you can find one on your store somewhere, why don't you send them a virtual Easter egg and just let them know you're thinking of them. But whatever it is that you might send to them, let's get ready to show some people some love right now. Are you ready? Come on church, once again let's do this. Three, two, one, go! It's finished. It's over. There's more of them than us and they look a lot bigger. The villain's got the girl and his fingers on the trigger. Voldemort, Sauron and Vader reign. It's gone to penalties against the Germans again. It's a terrible feeling when hope is erased, faith misplaced, virtue defaced, gloom embraced, reputation replaced with the taste of disgrace. When you've pushed every door and it's been slammed in your face, when you realise you're third, in a two horse race. So come sit with me on Golgotha's slopes. See human history at its lowest ebb. See the forces of goodness and grace on the ropes. Evil had spoken, last rites read. In a phony gown and thorny crown, he's mocked and knocked and shamed. As he staggers down through an angry town, they spit and hit and hate. Hands that forged galaxies and flung starry trails are pierced and punctured by merciless nails. His body succumbing to brutal infliction. These are the horrors of crucifixion. And as dice are tossed, hope is lost. Desolate disciples count the cost. King of the Jews, his headrest embossed. A criminal's killing on Calvary's cross. 
And as last words cut through foul-smelling air, the whole of the cosmos cries out in despair. It is finished. It's over. But then dawn breaks on Easter day. Darkness quakes as shadows give way to the light. See, resurrection's the plan. It's why God sent him. And the comeback's on, there's a change of momentum. The powers of damnation in previous jubilation have been hushed and crushed by the Lord of creation. See, he takes the hit, stands where we should have stood. And that's why we call Friday good and he's back with life and with us and blessed. And that's why we can know it as Sunday best. So to the four nil down, to the backs against the wall, listen to his rallying resurgent call. And to those up against it in brokenness and pain, Easter's story roars, we go again. So thine be the glory, death's lost its sting. Here's to Jesus, the comeback king. Well, it's Easter Sunday. It's a day in our calendar that for all those who are followers of Jesus, not just here in Southport, but all over the world, is absolutely pivotal as we remember not only his resurrection from the dead, but it's the day when we remind ourselves over all other days of the very real hope that we have and that we carry within us, that death is not the end, that it does not and no longer ever will have the last and final word over our lives that there is way more to life than simply what we see around us and that we have that hope and that assurance of spending eternity in heaven. I hope that excites you today and gives you reason to rejoice wherever you might be watching or listening to this, especially if you're feeling right now that maybe you're still stuck somewhere in Good Friday or Saturday where things are still looking perhaps a little bit dark and uncertain for you. I really hope that over these next few minutes that we spend together, you might begin to sense some of that heaviness lifting and a fresh sense of hope coming and beginning to fill your heart and your mind. That really is my hope and my prayer for each one of us today. Now, if you've got a Bible with you, whether that's a printed version or perhaps an electronic version on your phone or your tablet, turn with me to the Gospel of John and chapter 20 and put your finger in there because we're going to read some verses from it in a few moments. But just before we do that, I wonder... If you've ever found yourself in a situation where you're desperately searching for something, but for the life of you, you just can't seem to locate it. Has that ever happened to anyone? Maybe for you gents, you've lost your wallet or your car keys and no matter where you look, you just can't seem to find them. Or perhaps ladies, you've lost your purse or one of those really expensive earrings that your husband brought you for your anniversary. And you're turning the house upside down, back to front, going down the back of the sofa, or even going through the rubbish bin with the hope that it might turn up somewhere. Or maybe it's not that you've lost something, but you're in a position where you're desperately trying to get hold of something, maybe like a birthday gift or a Christmas gift, but the shops are sold out and so you're going through every possible internet site and search engine trying to locate one that's still available from someone or somewhere, anywhere in the world. You don't care ex uh, where exactly, you just need to get hold of one. You know what it is that you want, but you just can't seem to get your hands on it. Can anyone identify with that today? I'm sure all of us can if we're being honest, and we'd all say that it's a horrible place to be in, isn't it? But then how things change when you manage to find it or locate it, then it's like, wow, that, that, that sense of relief and peace and joy that now invades within, and it's like, woohoo, the world's a happy place once more. Come on, indulge me. We're going to read a story in the Bible where something like this happened to a lady one particular day. In fact, it was the very first Easter Sunday. Let's read it together. John chapter 20, and verses 11 to 18. And, and as we do this, I want to ask you the question this morning. What is it that you're looking for? What is it that you're looking for? Mary was standing outside the tomb crying and and as she wept, she stooped and, and looked in. And she saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. 
Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they've taken away my Lord, she replied, and, and I don't know where they've put him. And she turned to leave and she saw someone standing there. It was Jesus, but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, Jesus asked, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him and I'll go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. And she turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the father, but go find my brothers and, and tell them that I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I've seen the Lord. And she gave them his message. You know, I was born towards the end of 1970. And so growing up as a teenager, one of the bands that were making it big on the music scene were an Irish collective called U2, who I'm sure most of you, if not all of you, know only too well. And as you'll know, they went on to become one of the biggest bands of all time, having major hits and, and number ones many times over. And one of their biggest and their most famous, hit, uh, famous hits, and one that's been one of not only their best-selling hits, but the best-selling hits of all time was a song that had a simple line in its chorus that said this, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I can hear you beginning to sing that now wherever you are, thinking, I love that song. You know, it's a song that was inspired by the American gospel scene and one that actually carries strong spiritual overtones or undertones, I'm not sure which one it is, but one of them anyway, it carries those tones throughout. And it's a song that I think depicts the cry of the human heart in that we're all searching for, for something, that, that one thing, that, that special something that will satisfy that longing that exists within each one of us. Even more so right now with all that's taking place around us with this coronavirus crisis that we're in. You see, let's be honest, in a matter of a, f of a few days, the world has all of a sudden become a very different place to the one we knew, hasn't it? Our focus has changed. Our priorities have changed. Those things that for so long we once thought were really important have suddenly become not that important anymore. I know that by conversations I've been having with others and by what I've been reading on people's social media statuses. And as a result of that, it seems that we're all in a season of searching Scientists, uh, epidemiologists are searching for a vaccine or an antivirus of some kind that will both cure and protect. World leaders and their cabinets are looking for the right strategies to help get their nations and their people through this in the best and the safest ways possible. And for so many others, and maybe this is the place where, if you're being completely honest this morning, that you find yourself today, that you too are also looking for something. Maybe for you, it's, it's, it's hope, it's peace. Maybe it's an assurance that it's all gonna be okay and that you're gonna get through this. Really important things, but it could be a whole number of things. And if that's you today, then I wanna ask you to continue to listen on and maybe just lean in that little bit more because I've got some good news for you over these next few minutes. In fact, I believe it's the greatest news that you can ever hope to hear in all of your life. Because it's here in this story that you find what I believe it, it is that really you're looking for and what every person is looking for in their lives. You see, to set some kind of context, if you're not familiar with the story, it's early Sunday morning. And one of Jesus' most loyal followers, a lady whose life had radically been turned around by Jesus some time before, a lady called Mary Magdalene, who was still utterly bereft from a few days before where she saw Jesus horribly killed in full view of everyone. She makes her way to the tomb where his body had been laid to rest, only to find the, the really big stone that had been rolled in front of it to seal it off and prevent anyone from coming in and stealing Jesus' body, that this stone had been moved and that Jesus was no longer there. And as you can imagine, she was utterly heartbroken. It was bad enough that Jesus had been wrongly killed, but now this... It just added further upset to that devastation that she was already feeling. And so she turns and runs as fast as she can to find some of the friends and she tells them what's happened 
And then together, they all make their way back to the tomb to see for themselves what's been taking place. And the two men who she told, Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, got there before she could. And they went inside to see it for themselves whilst Mary eventually caught up and she stayed outside of the tomb crying. But then as she takes a little peek inside for herself, and I'll come back to that verse, verse 11 in a few moments, she sees two angels sitting on the slab where Jesus' body was supposed to be. And they ask her the question, why are you crying? To which she replies, well, someone's taken Jesus' body and I don't know where they've taken him. And then as she turns to leave, she notices another person standing there who she didn't recognize. And this person also asks her the same question, why are you crying? But then he asks her another question. He says to her, who is it that you're looking for? To which she replies, thinking this man is the gardener, sir, if you're the one who's taken him, please tell me where you've put him so I can go and get him. And this, then this man just says one word to her. That's all he says, just one word. He says, Mary. He says her name. And the moment that he does that, for her, everything changes. As soon as she hears it, now recognizing the voice who spoke it, the grief subsides. The fear and the anguish disappear. The tears, I think, continue to run, but no longer now are they tears of sadness and sorrow, but now they're tears of joy because she recognizes who this person is in that it's Jesus. <laughs> and what's more, he's alive. He's no longer dead. He's alive. Three days ago, he was crucified and he was laid to rest in a tomb, but now, He's standing there before her. He's alive. And then she does what every person who comes to realize that same truth themselves, I believe, should do. She runs off to tell everyone else this truth, this most amazing news that Jesus is alive. And it's this second question that Jesus asks her that I want us to think about for these next few moments where he says to her, who is it you're looking for? You see, I don't know about you, but for me, I think this is perhaps the better question to ask than the one I asked earlier on in, what is it that you're looking for? Because the truth is today that if you're someone who is genuinely searching for the answers to, to what you might call the real issues in life, the weightier issues, the, the weightier questions in as much as what is life all about? Where can I find true love and hope and, and, and purpose? Is it possible to find true acceptance and some assurance in light of all that's taking place around me right now? Those kind of questions. I want to suggest to you that you won't find the answers to those in a what, but in a who. That who being the person of Jesus Christ. And the beautiful thing is that in exactly the same way that he was standing there with Mary that first Easter morning, that he's right there with you today. Right now, wherever you are, whether that's your living room, your, your kitchen, your bedroom, hey, even the bathroom, if that's where you're watching us from right now, he's there with you. And if you listen closely, you'll hear him gently calling your name also. You know, whenever I read this story, I always find myself asking the question, why didn't Mary recognize Jesus? After all, she was one of his closest and most devoted followers. She'd spent so much time with him when he was alive and along with the other disciples before he was killed. So, so why now was she struggling to see him? I think there were perhaps a number of reasons for that. There were all kinds of things that were possibly clouding her sight at that moment. It might have been her tears and so this person before her was just one big blur. If you've ever been in that situation, you can identify with her in that area, I'm sure. So it might have been a tears that were getting in the way. But then maybe because it was still early in the morning and it was still dark, perhaps, in that part of the garden, that might have been uh, clouding uh, who, her, her, her sight and that she couldn't see him clearly. It might have been something else, like some elements of doubt or unbelief that had crept in that she wasn't sure. She had a hope, but she wasn't fully sure whether he really could rise up from the dead, even though she'd seen it happen 
with other people that Jesus had himself brought back from the dead, people like Lazarus and Jairus' daughter and others. Or it might have been that for some reason at this particular moment, Jesus chose to deliberately conceal himself from her, just like he did do to the disciples on the road to Emmaus a little bit later on that we read about in Luke's gospel. You know, I remember some years ago seeing a news clip of a, of a vicar of a church who played a bit of a trick on his congregation. He'd been teaching them about looking after the poor and needy for the weeks leading up to this particular Sunday and about how they should use what they'd got to, to help those who were less fortunate than themselves. And so he wanted to teach them a real abject lesson. And so uh, one Sunday morning as his people began making their way into church and I love this. He'd, he'd secretly got dressed as a homeless person beforehand and he just went and sat outside the front of the church. And as people began to make their way into church, he was asking them for help because he wanted to see what their response would be. And to his surprise, and I'm sure embarrassment and bewilderment, people in his church who'd heard him talk about all of this, they walked straight past him. Can you believe that? Totally ignored him. Not one of them recognized him for who he really was. And so as the service was about to start, he gets up from being outside the, the front door of the church and he walked into the building and walked down the aisle and made his way onto the platform. And you can see exactly where this is going now, can't you? And as he got onto the platform, people were looking a little bit uh, uh, unsure as to who this man was, but then slowly and surely he began taking off the shabby clothes and, uh, and, and uh, just wiping his face with all the dirty marks that he'd put on there so that people could begin to see who he really was. And you can imagine the reaction from everyone there. That wasn't a great morning to be in church, especially if you'd been uh, in church the previous weeks when he'd be teaching all this. And don't worry, I'm not planning on doing that to you when we start meeting here in person once again. But you know, here in this story, Whatever the reason was why Jesus was concealing himself for those few moments, the truth was it was never going to stay like that. And that he wouldn't allow those things that might have been getting in the way from Mary seeing who he was be there permanently. Because he's not that kind of God who wants to remain hidden. But he's someone who very much wants to be known. And he wants to be known by you because he's a personal God. And he wants to get involved in the everyday things that take place in my life and in your life. And for me, as I read this and I look at this story afresh, it's a reminder once again that we have a God who loves to draw close and who loves to make himself known, even in, especially in the darkest and the most difficult of times and transform us from the inside out. You see, what we read here isn't just the story of Easter. This simple exchange between these two friends is the good news of the gospel. And it's the greatest news anyone can ever hope to hear in their life. It's a story of God meeting us where we are. Hurts, wounds, doubts, and all those things, he still comes and meets us where we are. It's a story of God calling us by name and giving us the gift of new life. And it's a story of him then sending us out into the world to tell others so that they too can experience this for themselves. You see, the touching irony in this story is that whilst Mary was out looking for Jesus, it was actually Jesus who was looking for her. And he found her. And I want to encourage all of you today, and I include myself in this, to be like Mary. And that just like she did in verse 11, that amidst all this craziness that surrounds us and all the uncertainties that we hear about day in, day out right now. I want to encourage each of you to take a moment, and most of us have got a little bit more time on our hands than we normally had. And so I want to encourage you to, just to take a moment to press pause over your life and to take a fresh look inside the empty tomb and ask yourself the question, what does this mean for me? And then in the next breath, say to God, perhaps a more important question, God, what do you want to say to me through it? Because I believe that if you ask him that, he will certainly answer. Maybe for you, he wants to fill you afresh with his peace. He 
you're feeling uncertain, you're unsure, you're a little bit fearful, and he wants to come and give you that peace that surpasses all human understanding. To let it come and guard your heart and your mind right now. For some of you, it might be that he wants to remind you that his promises over your life, even though they might not yet have come to pass, they still stand. That he hasn't forgotten what he said to you in days gone by. For some of you listening to this, he wants to say to you, it's time to come back to me and renew that fellowship that we once had and enjoyed together. And then perhaps to others still, maybe he's calling you to come to him and for the first time in your life to open up your heart to him and invite Jesus in and to begin this journey with him. But to all of us, it's a reminder that he wants to come close. And in the words that John uses earlier on in his letter, Chapter 1 and verse 14, he wants to come and take up residence within your heart. You know, as I bring this to a close this morning and we get ready to sing one final song together, I just wonder today, is he calling you? Can you hear him in your heart calling your name? You see, all it took here in this story for Mary to see him was just one word, Mary. It's a name that she was familiar with because it was her name. But maybe today your name isn't Mary, maybe it's John or Susan or Stuart or Peter or Anne or Lindsay. Whatever your name might be, he's calling you. Now I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond to him right now. And in particular, I want to speak to those of you who have never made a decision to invite Jesus into your heart. And along with that, I want to include those who perhaps have made that decision in the past, but for whatever reason you've walked away and you know that today you're not walking with him in the way that you should or you once did. And today you're saying, I want to come back to him. And I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. And the way I'm going to do it is very simply by this. I'm going to pray a prayer. And all you have to do, if you want to make this your own, is simply say, Amen at the end. And if you truly mean it, I believe with all of my heart that God will hear it. And he will come right now and he'll take up residence in your heart and he'll give you that brand new start. And those are the things that you're asking him for. And all I would ask is that you let us know by clicking on the button on the screen. If you're watching church online, on that church online platform, or if you're on one of the other channels, maybe drop us a comment just to let us know. Give us a thumbs up that you've prayed this prayer so that we can look to make contact with you. But wherever you are right now, would you just close your eyes and maybe bow your head with me and uh, just repeat this with me in your heart. Lord Jesus, I come to you today and Lord, I confess that I need you in my life. I don't know everything about you, but I'm wanting to, to make that start, to begin that journey with you today. And I'm asking you right now to come and uh, forgive me of all the things I've done wrong, uh, to come and live within me, to, to give me a brand new start and to fill me with your peace and uh, that knowledge of your love. And Lord, I want to say to you that I want to begin to follow you all the days of my life. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Thank you for saving me. I now give my life to you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer, please put that thumbs up. Click that, that, that hand raise. If you're watching on the church online platform, we would love to hear from you and get impact. Uh, get back in touch with you. Thank you so much for listening. We're going to sing one final song together. We're going to go out on a note of praise. And so let me hand you back to the band who are going to lead us in this. And I just trust that you have a fab Easter Sunday. God bless you. So wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross has spoken mercy over me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart could fully know how glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful one.
the sky Your mighty words display for all to see The beauty of your majesty Awakes my heart to sing How marvelous, how wonderful you So much sing, beautiful one. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. My soul, my soul must sing. Beautiful one, beautiful one. I love you, beautiful one. I adore, beautiful one. To my heart with this love There's nothing on earth is beautiful as you As you've opened my eyes to your wonders anew Capture my heart with this love There's nothing on earth is as beautiful as you My soul, my soul, my soul must sing My soul, my soul must sing my soul, my soul must sing, beautiful one, my soul, my soul, my soul must sing, my soul, my soul must sing, my soul, my soul must sing, beautiful one, beautiful one, I love you, beautiful one, I adore. Well, we really hope that you've enjoyed being with us this morning and that you feel inspired by all that you've seen and heard. And once again, if you are new to Lakeside, we meet together in this way every Sunday, but we're not just limited to Sundays alone. We've got other things taking place through the week. So why not think about following us on, on either Facebook or Instagram, and uh, you can also become a part of this growing community. But our prayer for you is that for the remainder of this Easter Sunday and throughout this week ahead, that you will keep in good health and remain safe. And until we next connect together, may God richly bless you. <laughs>